we indeed come together to share all of life and life's journey of faith. We come together to share our joys and our concerns. And we know that the Spirit of God is with us and among us. So let us center ourselves once again in God's loving spirit as we worship today. Good morning. I invite all who are comfortably able to rise and join me in our responsive call to worship. I'll begin. God calls us to prayer and praise in many ways. This day, God brings us together, just as God called the people of Israel to gather manna in the desert to eat and sustain life. God of grace, give us this day our daily bread, and life, all life is created and nourished by you. May we grow in the new circles of understanding and being, reflecting the ways in which we have been touched by holy manna. Holy Spirit, come, give us this day our daily bread.
Once again this day, let us offer together in one voice our prayer of confession. Let us pray. O oh God, we confess that we often feed ourselves items and ideas that do not provide us the energy we need to do your work. This creates space between you and us, between ourselves and each other, as members of Christ's one body. Oftentimes, we are willing to risk our sustained health and well-being for immediate satisfaction. Forgive us, we pray. Through Jesus, we have been given an example of one who was truly nourished and sustained by God. In Christ, we are forgiven, made whole, and restored to the one body. Thanks be to God. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Amen. Please be seated. I invite all the children to come join me on the chancel steps. Oh, it's so good to see you guys. Hi, 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 everybody. So I have brought something very valuable. It is so valuable that a year ago, you could not find it in the, in the stores. My daughter actually took a picture in Target of the empty aisles that you could not buy toilet paper. Now that seems a little ridiculous to me, don't you think so? Why would that be so important? Well, it's because some people saw it as so important and they thought if they could save it, and hoard it, then they would drive up the price, right? And so it became a point where you only got to a point where you could only buy one roll of toilet paper, well, one, well, one package, it had several rolls in it, one package of toilet paper, right? Because people, if we, if we do that, what happens is not everybody gets to have some. Well, there's a story in the Bible. The, the Hebrew people cried out to God. They said, we are slaves in Egypt and you've got to help us. And so God sent Moses and led them into the desert on their way to the promised land. But after a while, they got mad and they got angry and they said, we're hungry. We should have stayed back in Egypt. At least there we wouldn't starve to death. And so God sent this white powdery stuff in the morning they were to collect it. It was on the ground. It was kind of like a pasty. It was almost like a bread. They called it manna, which means bread from heaven. And so they would collect it, but there was one rule. Okay? Can you guess what the rule is? You're close. You said, she said only allowed to get one. You're only allowed to get enough for you and your family for one day. You can't save like a whole bunch for tomorrow or the next day because guess what happened? If, do you think people tried to do that? Yeah, and you know what happened? It got buggy and just, oh, it was really, really gross. So they only could get enough that they could eat for one day. And guess what happened? Everybody got to eat. Wow. You know, God provided because God said, trust me on this one. Just trust me. I will make sure that there is manna every single day. And guess what? There was manna every single day. They just had to trust. But sometimes it's hard to trust, you know, but God says, trust me. Now, there's enough toilet paper to go around. There's enough food to go around, right? But 
we sometimes will hoard things because we're just afraid and we don't want to trust. But God uses each of us, that's right, each one of you, each one of us to say, there's enough, share what you have, and we will all eat. Trust me, there's enough. Wow, I want to put my faith in a God that says, trust me, I'm there for you. What do you think? Does that sound good? All right, my friends. Before you go off to Sunday school, which I'm going to help you go out to the gym, right? We're going to say a quick prayer. So let's pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for using each of us to make sure that everyone gets something, that food, anything that they need, we can do it if we just trust you. And all the people said, amen. All right, my friends, we are out this way. Good morning. Our scripture this morning is from the Old Testament book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 2 through 4 and 9 through 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out here into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails come up and cover the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there was a surface of the wilderness that was a fine, flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So did you catch it? Uh, did you catch the big problem that the Israelites were having in our scripture this morning? Uh, did you catch what was really going on in their hearts? What they were really yearning and longing for? If only we could go back and if only we had died back in the land of Egypt, they cried out to Moses. Uh, or in other words, if only we could go back to the way things used to be. <laughs> That's not a timely question at all, is it? Right? <laughs> if only we could go back to the way things were before the pandemic. Uh, if only we could go back to being able this morning to stand and greet one another without any fear whatsoever with handshakes and hugs. If only we could have all of the loved ones that we've lost over the years right back here in the pews with us this morning. If only we could go back to the way things used to be, for example, when maybe Reverend Wintermeyer was here 
when we had a church of 1,500 and hundreds of children and youth running around all over the place and confirmation classes of 40 and 50 and 60. You can look at the pictures on the wall just behind this wall. And traffic attendance, for heaven's sake, out there in the parking lot directing traffic because so many people were coming to church. Heck, we'd even settle, don't you think, for going back to the way things were, I don't know, pick a year, 2015, when we were going full bore at that time with our new vision to live out God's love, welcome, compassion, community, encouragement, and peace in the world with this wonderful wind and uh, spirit beneath our wings. If only we could go back even to 2015. Maybe more impactful than just us here at church. If only we could go back to the way things used to be in our country. Maybe, say, in the 1950s, uh, when the church, as we know, was absolutely the center of nearly every community across the land. And the women's lib and civil rights movements had not yet emerged and manufacturing and trade jobs were plentiful, and there was this burgeoning middle class, at least for some of us white men and our families anyway. As we know in so many respects, this deep and collective yearning and longing to get back to the way things used to be in our country is what fueled the fire for some people to take that drastic action of storming the U.S. Capitol building back in January this year. But here's the thing. We all know in our heads that no matter how hard we try, we can never go back to the way things used to be, whether in our own personal lives or here at church, or out there in our country that we love so much and that God loves so much as well. No amount of spiritual, emotional, mental energy that we expend will ever bring back the time that is so long gone now. No amount of yearning and longing and wishing and hoping to get back to the way things used to be will ever make it so. We all surely know in our minds and in our heads that the only thing we really have is this very day and hopefully tomorrow. And so the challenge, therefore, is for us to sort of get our hearts in line with our heads, uh, to get our spirits to let go of completely living in the past so that we can focus on the present right here, right now. And as it turns out, and as you heard, this is the exact admonishment that God gives to Moses to give to the Israelites in our scripture this morning. The Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain down bread from heaven for you. And each day, each day, you'll go out and gather enough food for that day. And the scripture says, if you read it closely, the scripture says that as the Israelites changed their energy, their focus, their spiritual, emotional, and mental gaze from looking back in the past toward Egypt and instead looked to this present wilderness that they were in, the glory of the Lord appeared to them and they received their daily bread, exactly what they needed. But that said, it is not like the Israelites didn't have a very good and legitimate reason, obviously, to be sad and sorrowful. I mean, after all, back in Egypt, the one thing that they did have was the knowledge, unfortunately, of what every and each new day was going to bring. Um, it wasn't right. But they absolutely knew that every day was going to bring a little bit more pain and misery and hardship 
as they slaved away under their taskmasters. They never had to wonder what a day was going to be like back there in Egypt. But out there in the wilderness, on the other hand, everything was just up in the air. They had no idea what might transpire or what might happen in any given day. And so to lose, you see, this odd sense of comfort that comes in at least knowing what to expect and what to prepare for in any given day is good reason for some sadness and some sorrow and maybe even some fear as well. And yet, as we know, the fact still remained that as long as the Israelites allowed their minds, hearts, and spirits to be captivated and held by this sort of idealized and romanticized past that they had created for themselves that was actually, as we well know, not good at all without sincerely and honestly facing the challenges of their present wilderness then they just simply couldn't see how God was with them, and they therefore couldn't begin to take some new steps forward. Well, in application to us today, uh, not so much right here at church, but actually in our lives out there in the world, in our country, uh, there are so many of our white brothers and sisters, whether right here, in our church or in our families or next door in Jefferson County or elsewhere in Missouri or maybe even further away in places like Eastern Appalachia or Western Big Sky Country who have been grieving for too long the loss of a country that they no longer recognize and that they feel has left them completely out and completely behind. And many of them, as we well know, have so idealized things so long ago that they're living their current present lives completely in the past and trying to recreate life 50, 60 years ago, which as we know is simply impossible. And I really think church, we need to be there for those people for whom this is the case, to listen, uh, to encourage folks to express their sadness and sorrow over that loss instead of what? Instead of their hatred and anger, to listen to the things, the good things that we know so many of our brother and sister's way of life has to offer us all. Things like the importance of family and community and hard work and giving one's word and always defending the underdog. All of which, by the way, are things that build up God's whole human family among us all. At the same time, there are so many of our, as we know, black and brown and red brothers and sisters, whether here in St. Louis or elsewhere all across rural and urban America, who never had the past in the first place that their white brothers and sisters once enjoyed and now feel has been lost. And I think the church, we need to be there with those for whom this is the case as well, to listen, to encourage their expression of healthy sadness and sorrow instead of hatred and anger and rage, and to build up and celebrate and ask about the good things that their way of life has to offer all of us. Things like, as we well know, they share the importance of family and community, but other things like keeping hope alive in the midst of hopelessness and hopeless situations. Or like, 
And just think about our Native American brothers and sisters like loving your enemy or like always seeking and striving for justice for everyone, for all. All of this said this morning, if only we could go back to the way things used to be is totally (laughs) an understandable lament, whether in our own personal lives for those that we've lost along the way or whether here in our church or whether out there in our country that we love so much and we know God loves so much as well. But nonetheless, as we heard, God encouraged the Israelites so long ago to turn away from their past, to healthily acknowledge the sorrow of their loss, and to turn to God's presence in and among them in each and every day. And so I think the message is the same for us today and every day as well, whether in our personal lives or always here in our life together as the church or out there in our lives, in our modern society, country, and world. May God ever help us to healthily mourn the pasts that we've lost. And may God also help us to face the challenges of whatever wildernesses we find ourselves in at any given time with the faith and the trust that God will indeed provide. I'm going to rain down heaven, rain down manna from heaven for you. And each day, each day, you'll go out and you'll gather enough food for that very day. Thanks be to God. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
As we enter into our time of prayer this morning, I would like to invite us this day to offer silent prayer and meditation from our hearts. So before I offer a prayer, let us offer our own thoughts and prayers to God in silence. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, it's so easy for us to long for the way things used to be, especially if the way things used to be were very good for us. Help us to remember that in those days of yore when we might have been enjoying your many blessings, others may have been deeply hurting and therefore praying for you to deliver them from their trials. We know you receive our thanksgiving for the blessings of our lives in the past, but help us to not turn that thankfulness for the past into an intransigent expectation for today. Help us to know that in every present wilderness, you are with us, and then help us to be willing to grow and to change into the human community you have intended us to be. Help us as people who follow your Christ to listen to others with compassion, to encourage the expression of sorrow instead of anger and hatred, and to bring out the good in every person and group of people among your children. Help us as your community here at church to resist looking back and to press on toward a future in which you have promised to supply all our needs. As we receive the gifts of bread and wine in communion today, may we truly be reminded that Christ nurtures and feeds us with his own life, which he poured out for us and for the world. And then, when we have been nourished, send us forth into the world with the power and compassion of his Holy Spirit. It is in his name we pray, as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to prepare your elements as we prepare for Holy Communion. We come to the table of Christ with gladness and thanksgiving for the strength and sustenance that we find here. We come to the table of Christ with praise and celebration for his yoke is easy, his burden is light. We come to the table of Christ where our hungry hearts and thirsty souls are satisfied with the finest food. 
This is the table of the risen one whose love and compassion knows no end. This is the table of the risen one whose love and compassion is poured out for us and the whole world. This is Christ's table, and all are welcome here. God be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Give thanks to God, blessed Trinity. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Praise to you, divine creator. Thank you for the gift of life, the beauty of nature, the structure of the law, and your steadfast loving kindness. Praise to you, divine redeemer. Thank you for sharing our human existence from birth through death to everlasting life. You have shown us the way worth emulating, bringing healing, and hope to those most in need. Praise to you, divine sustainer. Thank you for the vision to see beyond the immediate, a calm in the midst of the storm, the strength to build an ever-expanding community, and the courage to bring about any change necessary within our lives. Holy And so now let us remember how this sacrament began on the night that Jesus was betrayed as he gathered in the upper room with his disciples. After giving thanks, he took the bread and he broke it, saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat this, do this in remembrance of me. And in like fashion, we remember that after dinner, he took the cup. And he said, this is the new covenant of my love poured out for you and for the world. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so let us join our voices together in offering our prayer of consecration. Let us pray. Holy God, send your spirit upon these gifts of grain and grape that they might be for us the presence of the living Christ and pour out your spirit upon us so that through us others might know the blessings of living in communion with you and one another. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. So come now, all things are ready. The body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. This is the cup of Christ poured out for you and for the world. Take and drink. Now, as we have received God's gifts and remembrance of Jesus' whole life, ministry, death, and resurrection, let us stand as we are comfortably able and offer our prayer of thanksgiving this day.
for the beauty of creation, the gift of life and your presence with us now, we give you thanks. Send us now to be channels of your peace in the world, to build your community on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So now let us go forth with an even deeper faith and an even greater hope. And may the light of God's love and the goodness of God's grace be our strength and our guide today and always. Amen. Amen. <laughs>